In today's lesson, we're going to go over what aircraft manufacturers do to make sure that the airplane is safe in a stall. And two of the main factors are you want the airplane to be controllable through as high of an angle of attack as possible. And the way that they do that um, are wing washout, camber, vortex generators, and platform selection, which is the shape of the wing if you view it from the top. And then you also want the airplane to give the pilot a warning before it stalls. So you want there to be something that lets the pilot know that they're getting close to a stall before it actually happens, and we'll get into how they do that. The inner part of the uh, wing here, where the wing meets the fuselage, uh, is called the wing root. And aircraft manufacturers want the aircraft to stall at the root, closer to here, and then develop outwards instead of stalling out at the tips and developing inwards. There is a couple reasons for that. Uh, the first one is the ailerons, which is how you control the roll of the airplane, are out on the tips. They're at the ends of the wings. So if a stall happened here, the way that an aileron works is by changing the amount of lift that each wing creates. If the wings are creating a different amount of lift, then one wing's going to drop and the other wing's going to rise, and that will cause you to roll. So how do the ailerons change the amount of lift that each wing creates? Well, they do it by changing the angle of attack. And as long as you're below the critical angle of attack, as long as you're unstalled, increasing your angle of attack is going to give you more lift. Decreasing your angle of attack is going to give you less lift. The way that the ailerons change the angle of attack is by changing the cord line by changing the trailing edge. So the cord line is a straight line from the leading edge of the wing to the trailing edge of the wing. The ailerons change where the trailing edge is, so that changes the cord line. The angle of attack is the angle between that cord line and the relative wind. So if you're changing the angle of the cord line, you're going to change the angle of attack. And you can see the example here. The original cord line with the ailerons um, in their central position has an angle right here of 25 degrees. If you lower the aileron, it goes up to an angle of 30 degrees. And if you raise the aileron, it goes down to an angle of 20 degrees, all with the same relative wing. So if you're operating at a lower angle of attack, like say 10 degrees, the whole wing's at 10 degrees, then the aileron going down would increase the angle of attack. That would cause more lift, and it would raise that wing. The aileron going up would decrease the angle of attack. It would cause less lift, and it would lower that wing, and that would cause the airplane to roll and then turn in that direction. But if we get past our critical angle of attack, past that angle of attack that gives us the maximum possible lift at that airspeed, then changing the angle of attack is going to work backwards. We'll start out here in the black. Um, we'll say that's a 25 degree angle of attack. You see down here. Um, airplane stalled, but it's still generating a fair amount of lift. It's still generating as much as you would uh, generate at a 14 degree angle of attack. So you should still be able to fly like that. The problem is that now if you lower your aileron, which would normally increase the angle of attack and increase lift, still going to increase your angle of attack. Um, it's going to go to this red 30 degrees. You see it moves this down to 30 degrees, but now you actually lost lift. And so that wing is going to drop instead of climbing. And the opposite happens on the aileron going up. It's decreasing the angle of attack, which would normally decrease the lift to make that wing drop and the airplane roll and turn in that direction. But now when the aileron goes up, you're, you're getting closer to the critical angle of attack, which means you're getting closer to that optimum, maximum lift angle, and so you're actually going to increase the amount of lift. And once you exceed this critical angle of attack, if the ailerons are stalled, then when the pilot rolls right on the controls, the airplane's actually going to roll left. And that's a very dangerous situation because you never want the airplane to do the opposite of what the pilot's trying to tell it to do.